Welcome to your week 10 edition of Head to Head. We got Auburn, we got Texas A&M, and we got Lauren Sisler, and we got Kevin Skarbinski. And you have to wonder, Lauren, is this one of those loser leaves town kind of games? Well, Kevin, Texas A&M has not had a lot of luck at home at Kyle Field against SEC West Division opponents. And they bring in Auburn, 11 o'clock kickoff. So it'll be an interesting matchup. Of course, we know Kellen Mond's going to start this football game at quarterback for Texas A&M. But with Nick Starkle in the mix, it's been a little bit of a mashup between the two quarterbacks. So there could be a little bit of a controversy there, a little bit of shifting. But some other things I want to look at here. Christian Kirk, outstanding receiver. Gus Malzahn said this week that they've got to focus on special teams. They are averaging a low in the SEC for punts. And Christian Kirk is a guy that's going to be on the receiving end of those punts. And he's been outstanding on special teams. So that's something he said they've got to emphasize this week. But something else to look at that could be detrimental to this team, Cameron Petway not healthy. And I know that we've seen a carry on Johnson that is now back to 100%. And really, we haven't seen the two of those guys split a lot of carries this year because it's kind of been a, a give or take who's healthy, who's not. But I still think that this definitely impacts the depth and backfield for this Auburn football team. Yeah, fractured scapula. Yeah, that I makes that makes my my shoulder hurt just yeah. he hearing that that phrase. You want to have all hands on deck as you get into the stretch run. Exactly. And Cameron Petway, while he's been banged up all year long, had maybe his best outing against Arkansas in Al in Auburn's last game. And now you don't have him. Have him. And yet, Carryon Johnson has been the lead back, the lead dog for that backfield this year. But Cam Petway was the second leading rusher in carries and yards. So now you don't have that option. Now you're going to have to have a guy like Cam Martin step up or a guy like Malik Miller step up. And Auburn has been so reluctant to give the ball to anyone but one back in most of these games this year. Will they distribute the carries a little better? Here's the big advantage for Auburn. This should be a quarterback mismatch in their favor. Jared Stidham, uh, you know, he, he got such hype before the season, then came Clemson, he was running for his life, and everybody forgot about him. He's been a very good quarterback. Very efficient. And he, they, they just didn't call a very good game for him in the second half at LSU. When they shut it down, they thought they had enough points to win. Clearly, they were wrong. But this is an, I, I love this stat. There are only three FBS teams in the country that average at least 220 yards passing a game and 220 yards rushing a game. Ohio State, Toledo, and Auburn. Wow. That means they're getting better balance than they've had by far in the Gus Malzahn era. Yeah. Now, will they continue to call those plays? Will they continue to mix it up, especially if they get a lead early? And they've had success. The visiting team has won every game in the series, Lauren, since A&M joined the SEC. It's 3-2 to A&M in that regard because they played three games in Auburn that they've won, and Auburn's won the two in College Station. And oh, by the way, the last time they went out there, they won with Jeremy Johnson at quarterback. All right, Kev, it is prediction time. And I look at this matchup, I think you got the 12th man that always goes in Texas A&M's favor. But as we said earlier in the show here, they have not won at home against a division opponent in the last six games. So I think that this Auburn team is going to come out. Uh, they, they're coming off a bye week. They've been working on things and ultimately working on getting healthy. I think that's a big factor here. And, of course, uh, as you said, Jarrett Stenham is obviously showing poise. He's obviously showing efficiency. I think that they are able to get in front of the sticks uh, take a lead and never look back. As you said, a lot of this will play calling. That's going to be a big part of this. But I do see Auburn winning this football game. My final score prediction, 31-21. to 21. This is a game Auburn has to win to set up some really huge games down the road starting the following week with Georgia. If they have their mind on their business, and they've been really good coming off of bye weeks under Gus Malzahn. They're undefeated in games after full bye weeks under Malzahn. That's in their favor. It's an 11 o'clock kickoff, so the Kyle Field crowd will not be as rabid as it might otherwise be. And A&M has won seven straight morning kickoffs at home, but only two of those games were against SEC opponents, and those two SEC opponents were South Carolina and Vanderbilt. That's not Auburn. Auburn should win this game 28-14. to 14.